Hi everyone. So we are slowly starting the new live session, new live session of Chrysalid Gallery. So we are slowly waiting when we are connected. So here the people started. So hi everybody. Good evening, and that's me, uh, Alexi, gallery director of Chrysalid. And today we have a live session number fourteen which means uh, that it's already 14 weeks uh, that started Corona and 14 weeks gallery is closed and during 14 weeks we are trying to connect with you guys and to have the live sessions answer your questions about the gallery, about art life, about everything that might interest it, interesting for you and me gallery director here uh, then later today later during the live session will join us uh, Max van Luben art curator and we are going to speak with her about the subject how the independent artist can be actually independent and not doing the sad jobs well the like you those who can do it actually and uh, also i need to mention that we have a big uh, team of the gallery there is a social media moderator who works on all our social media it's tatiana van schiffman here and we have our brand identity developer uh, skuchaka or anton and his kuchaka is his uh, instagram uh, profile and also we have an assistant uh, Bruno Angular, uh, who actually helps us a lot with uh, new gallery developments like a magazine. He helps us with the marketing and works with the new developments that we have so much to do with you. So that's about the team. I'm also always uh, asking you to send us the questions during the live sessions and to be communicative with us because it's not only one way that I'm talking to you or Martin is talking to you but you guys also communicating with us and you can send us all your nasty questions, good remarks, bad remarks. So here's Martina joining us. To ask guys uh, any questions, we are here for you uh, naturally. After the sessions, we try to record this video. Hi, Martina. Just Hi. In uh, so I'm just saying that uh, these sessions will record, uh, and you can find them on the gallery YouTube channel, and yes. also IG, IGTV. My God, I cannot pronounce it, but IGTV uh, of uh, our gallery. So, hi everybody, stay with us, uh, send us our, your question. Also, I always ask you to send where you're from, because it's always interesting, and when we know that you are from Greece, from Brazil, from US, from the Netherlands, from China, it makes us easier maybe to, <laughs> to say <laughs> what also. actually, how we can help, you know, what is specific, because each country is, each market is so different, there is nothing similar. So once, uh, just make, uh, that was about introduction and the question of today that we had was the, actually how the artist can be independent and to generate incomes. Yeah. So I was thinking <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Martin, I guess you were thinking too. Yeah, I mean, since, uh, since the question was asked a few weeks ago. Yes. So when I did the live by myself, and um, I mean, I had a, I had given like sort of a bullshit answer to it, uh, which was very quickly because it was at the end of the of the session, which was being stubborn. Uh, but we can elaborate a little bit more on that today. Yeah. Um, Do you want to expand the gallery to other countries? We had once a gallery in Tel Aviv. <laughs> we can share this question. We had experience of doing the gallery in the Middle East. Uh, yeah, maybe that's what we can speak about. And Pablo, thank you for the question. Maybe once yes. in a you know. Definitely we have partners in US, actually, and they are Mexican by origin in Los Angeles, so actually that's quite interesting. Their name is Curator Love. You know, once they even came to us, to the galleries, it was nice. So how do you think, Martina, what is the first step, you know, coming back to the main subject about gallery, independent artists being independent? Independent artists be independent. The first question is, do you really want to be an artist? 
Like, do you know what you're getting yourself into? Because well, I, um, yes, I want to be an artist. I truly believe I can change this fucking world. So. Wonderful. Then prepare for uh, a life of struggles. Yeah. Uh, not that ours is a little bit <laughs> like that much better, honestly. Uh, but honestly, but I mean, in in this in our sector, is not you're not really driven by by the money or by the uh, by the profit that you make with your art. Uh, but because you need to create, you need to put yourself out there, and you have this uh, this thing that is driving you, uh, that is driving inside you to to express yourself and to show to others and have others reflect on the same thing. Um, yeah. that interests you in in general uh how to be how to be financially independent um you were mentioning the side jobs at the beginning of the like during the introduction yeah. but sometimes it is uh it is necessary especially at, at the beginning uh to have side jobs and by beginning i mean like a few years probably a decade um, because of course you have to eat and you have to be able to to keep on producing. Um, yeah, well, so the artist is photographer. Sorry to interrupt. The person can walk in the magazine or newspaper. So kind of at least photography related. Uh, yeah, you can be. You can have a photography related. You can also have something. I mean, if it's slightly related to your job or to your to your practice in general, it's it's so much better because it keeps you focused. Um, at the same time, and especially keeps you in the network of of the uh, of art in general or or your fields, which is really important. Um, but at the same time, if you have like a side job to it, uh, you have to make sure that it gives you enough sustenance in, in yeah. like in terms of money, um, and especially that it gives you enough yeah. time to write yeah. and to experiment and to well write sorry to create in. I, I went to writing, but um, to to experiment and to be uh, to be able to keep on your practice yeah. uh, in general. I've I, I saw that daily work in any case the practice is a daily. It's like you're working daily on this and you concentrate. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, you're especially then working daily. You're constantly engaged in it. So maybe you're not even working daily uh, as in because you cannot do it for whichever reason but your your mind your mindset is is constantly engaged towards what you're uh, what you're creating what you're exploring what you're researching um okay i will get also back that's also an interesting question for pablo that we that we're getting well, i was thinking actually when uh, approaching the question of financial independent artists mm -hmm. because uh, when it comes to financial independent artists this means Mm, the question like uh, the product, the product as an art, art as a product, and mm -hmm. then uh, just keeping parallels, becoming like two sideways, like two parallels, way, two, like two rails. Mm -hmm. One part of the rail is artistic development, yeah. you know, and another rail is uh, financial development, and they go parallel, you yeah. know, like, like a train, uh, so you cannot go one this, one left and one right. <laughs> Uh, then it just trails, so it just stops, and it's like uh, some small crisis. So I was thinking that in certain moments we develop like uh, both parts. You know, one thing is like you are thinking how to develop yourself in an as an artist, and another rail is more see yourself like a strategy. You know, as uh, as you okay. want to deliver some product that you want to commercialize. Mm -hmm. So and that's uh, that's a mindset. It's not like daily that you think I'm um, actually have a strategy of how no, to no. Well, but you have some ideas of what you can do with your artworks and especially like where to show it, you know, when you want to exhibit your work, artwork, like to sell it. For example, to be financially independent is you start to think where does it fit, you know, which uh, platform, which festival, which art fair it fits. So that's how I saw I I, th I think it's also more of like a like the the financial um, independence comes into uh, two ways. So at the beginning, when you're actually creating the artwork, uh, yeah. that I mean, even like left aside, but you need to buy materials to experiment. You need to to have maybe a studio space 
uh, it's capital that you have to, that you want to invest, that you have to invest. And sometimes it's out of your reach. So if you have to 3D print a big glass sculpture, uh, you cannot do it by yourself for obvious reasons. So what you do is you have, you, you have to understand how other artists do it, which is usually through fundings, through art residencies, um, through like networking a little bit in general. Um, and that's, that's really like a big part of it because sometimes you, you underestimate the cost of what you're doing. Like maybe some, you, you can be very, uh, well, very lucky. You know how mm -hmm. fast you can do it. You know, sometimes so in one month you can do it and then it's like, like half a year. Well, maybe, you know, it, it also depends if you have a deadline, but sometimes you're very lucky that your practice requires you only pencil and paper. And sometimes instead you need like super expensive latex, for example, to, to experiment or, or ceramics, which means that you actually have to have a kiln or have a laboratory, uh, have uh, any kind of appliances. Um, so that comes a lot into into that part. And, and you should... Um, you should network as in you should rely also on your fellow artists. Most of them, they're, um, they're willing to help you. They're willing to share their knowledge. Um, and you have funding. I also was thinking about collectives uh, while yeah, preparing sure. the session. Well, it's the same. I mean, it's the same as, uh, um, as residency. Basically, they run on, on the same kind of thing of, of peer help. Yes. Uh, so just to relieve the ple pleasure and to... to um, constructing network which is artist to artist so it's creator space and like you said of course then it comes to the second part like once you've done the work how do you how do you put it out there in the world and that's where the the galleries come from or or in in general the well i don't know foundations or or other festival and so on so if you have open calls and uh, submissions in general, both from, from privates uh, like us or f for more of, like foundations, public spaces. Yes, do send your material, do send your portfolio, do send your CV. It's well, a lot of work. Yes. It's a fuck load of work because for, for each one that you send, um, like, I don't know, you send 20 and probably you get one uh, response. Uh, but at the same time, you might also only need that one. Yes, or, yes, indeed. indeed. Or, and like the more you experiment with it, uh, sometimes it's also... And then uh, especially when you got the one, you know, you got one response, the next time you apply and you get two and three, so it becomes faster. Because more you apply and more you, the artist becomes you, present, yeah. more he's becoming uh, recognized and... Uh, exactly. The organization knows that the person, the artist can deliver the work so they can easier invest money into his works or her works and exactly. then uh, it's getting faster to gather finances like subsidies or to pay the material or the trips if needed sometimes like the standard was going out for one year to Caribbean islands to make a photo session there so it has become easy also to gather finances and funds to raise the funds to... Yeah. Definitely. But I, I was thinking even a little bit more down to earth. I mean, Lisandro has um, luckily a lot of experience in um, uh, elaborating himself. He's very, he's very sharp and he's very um, accurate in the way that uh, he makes research. Uh, he's, he's amazing in that. Uh, honestly, wonderful. Much more better than me. Uh, but on a more like practice based uh for example jake he was the he, um one of our artists he made this installation at mesh earlier this year in january um foundation in rotterdam. exactly in rotterdam and probably he got a little bit of funding for that or even if you have to invest your 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 own money or get only partial funding of it it was crucial for us funding him Yes, so right. sometimes you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to experiment and seemingly work for free, but exposure it, it is very important, especially <clears throat> when it comes to to you know spaces like us or or museums also on. Um, I know, for example, the museum here in Skidam, the state of like is doing this um, like speed dating 
that's how they call it um with yes. exactly yes. with museums uh, the culture, yes. yeah, yeah. with different people and for example even to apply in something like that where you don't exactly showcase your artwork directly but at the same time you're present there and you talk to these people yes that's also very important um so, so they kind of aware what you are doing yes exactly Exactly. So at the beginning, it's a little bit rocky, but the more it picks it up, um, sometimes the more it surprises you also because uh, it can get very fast. Maybe not really financially, but at the same time, the more you, you know, you're representing, the more you're able to ask for funding. Or so if you work for a foundation, they already, they most probably have some money to, to give you to, uh, I don't know, work for six months, for example, have a little bit of space in their in their and there are uh, different like talking about the foundations there are like national foundations like in Netherlands in France in UK or like for example oh, cool. less successful countries if I can say so <laughs> yeah, like for example Russia or Israel mm -hmm. where there are not a lot of funds for the artists still there are uh, international funds like UN or still European funds based on some international uh, collaboration developments which are still granted for yeah. non-Europeans or any kind of origin of, of artists. Yeah, so I mean, residencies, residencies yeah. work like that all around the world. So even if maybe something that does not fit you like 100% or you have to do it uh, instead of going to Canada because you want to get, go to Canada, you go to Peru or you're sent to Peru because you you find it there, just, just go, just experiment, just even to get... Uh, out of your comfort zone and out of your what is your normal environment yeah, yeah. Uh, it's yeah. it's really good to it and then you can come back and and work on what you learned or work on what you yeah, found out it gives a network and the artists during yeah. this residence they share the experiences you know what is where they've been you know where they came exactly. through what is worth of uh, contacting yeah whom. exactly <laughs> how to write the applications and how not to. That's, that's also difficult. That's also difficult, I mean, to be articulate and be clear. And uh, it's not the easiest thing. Uh, but it, it's also practice. The more you do it, the more, the more you, you know how to do it. Um, and, and also how to, you know, put the portfolio there. But I think the main advice, I mean, which comes back to what I was talking about um, last time is like being stubborn is the fact that you can do a lot of it and maybe you spend 80% of your time just writing applications, sending emails and whatever, uh, and then you forget that you actually have to produce the work. That's right. Which, well, which yes. so be, like the being stubborn is like, do you feel it? Do you feel like you really need to do it? Okay, then just that's your main yes. part. That's your main focus. I, one hour per day out of this time you dedicate to write the applications. Or yes, to look exactly. For different platforms where you can show your work, or like always think where it's like. Exactly. I was preparing for this session. I just decided to Google, you know, like uh, platforms to show the artworks online, offline, festivals. It's really a lot, and uh, they're always looking for interesting artists because they also need artists. They need kind of creative okay. people behind, but to be okay. successful themselves. So uh, they also kind of in demand for. For, for creative, for, for artists, you know, of different mm -hmm. media. And that also becomes interesting because participation, usually they're not expensive or for free, or if you sell the works, then there is no charge. So it's becoming interesting yeah. to kind of to support yourself and to develop the trust and confidence. I think mm -hmm. also often the artist is losing the confidence. And we it's had it's easy enough. Yeah. So we started to work with an artist, and then they say, okay, I don't have enough money, it's difficult, and then I'm going to make a pause for one or two years. And then for us as a gallery, it's become frustrating that you know, we can't sell, or the collectors that had the works, they're just like, okay, the artist doesn't produce, it was a wrong investment. Yeah. So it's becoming like uh, kind of too fast, maybe for, for, for us it was an okay. experience. But actually that's what we are learning as a gallery. And also for you guys, it's important to be consistent in work and, you know, to be dedicated to it. I'd never give up. <laughs> that's, that, that's, also the, that's also the most difficult part of it, for sure. 
but once you once you have an idea of like really what what your drive is then then it easier it becomes i was talking to natalia yesterday when we were meeting in the gallery discussing the project that we are exhibiting in uh, also make the exhibition in september yeah exactly and i realized that i i think like a big reason why i was so miserable in the last few weeks is that that we needed to do a lot of things like very important things for the gallery uh but then i didn't have maybe that much time to draw into research or experiment or work with samuele or or livio or or jake or whatever and or her especially uh so when i realized it i was like okay no i actually I, that's that's my job that i have to curate the content i have to to do the content but it's it's so easy to to get you know drawn into into that's doing cool. the rest yes yeah that that you forget sometimes your your actual purpose of it so and that's also the same thing with with an artist that at some point you i don't know you 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 like you really you lose the drive or that spark that you had at the beginning i i saw it a lot when when i graduated uh that people didn't have deadlines anymore yeah uh, so they were not really doing their work and it's really hard to set deadlines for yourself for sure uh but at the same time once once you don't have people that give you feedback evaluate your project give you assignments or even if you know help you with that with the ones that you want to do then they just stop making work altogether and it was such a pity because some of them were really good um so it was not really about the quality or or maybe what they needed or what they had to say but it was just yeah but just just deliver the actual yeah work exactly as an artist not only as a side job yeah and i think there is also there is always like this kind of ups and downs and especially downs where you're like okay fuck it i'm going to become an accountant uh do like a boring job gonna die of depression at 60 uh whatever in depth but and th- th- there are there are those those parts as well but it doesn't mean that it's it's all like that there are also a lot of joys and for me personally the nicest part of uh of this work is the people yes and that's not... the talking yes and for you exactly. and not not only the i mean of course you have like you said you have to deal with artworks which are objects uh but behind the the objects and what you market it's actually a lot of people that are there those the producers those that like us showcase it Uh, people that organize the events people that are willing to 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 put effort in it so you you actually work more with the people than the objects themselves uh sometimes which which is nice and you also get to look at the objects and be happy yeah, because they're again, pretty the gallery is like social work as well like so it's like social yeah. you know, and with audience you speak with audience and you speak with an artist and you try to combine it all in one kind of like we're trying to do now in instagram <laughs> hopefully yeah. if you have powers uh so yeah so that's how it's happening is, as well as exhibitions this exactly. develop and for the artists for us uh, it's very important that artists develop and produces the work but coming yeah. back to object and being financially independent is yeah. like uh, either you want for me it's also like a long term result like some an established artist and to be recognized and you want to kind of short term like you know to do something very fast uh, and to go to some art platforms like uh, art pool and just sell your works and you know not deliver kind of making the same things all the time without developing yourself yeah exactly how you yeah it depends on how you kind of, how the guy or how the, this person wants to to see its future you know how it sees it in very long long distance Yeah I mean I I think you can also do both especially if you're uh, a a photographer or someone that uh, deals with with prints like with printed work you also have the advantage of um selling uh well prints or or objects in general that are a little bit cheaper than your artworks and still make a little bit of money out of it uh like for example Julia uh one of the photographers that we're working with she she does that and it's actually pretty smart because you and you have a little a bit of for those who don't know she's still a 30 year student she's, exactly she's still a student but she's so savvy when it comes to um to like the strategy of 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 showing herself 
of yeah. networking. And sometimes, you know, it's just a matter of selling a few prints, uh, like nice prints, but not like super big archival stuff that are 40 euros a piece, uh, but something a little bit smaller that is still good quality and you just make it, I don't know, 20 of it and then you put it up, for example. That yeah. That's also a good idea, but... Um, and she's also you have to be... She also has a side job, Julia, as I know. Yeah, she, she does, yeah. definitely. But, uh, and it's also a matter of selecting what kind of prints and what kind of, of uh, artworks you want. So just not put all, all of it or like a series which is 20 pictures. No, just select three, four, five. Something like that that you, that, that, you know, are your, are your pivotal works and then you can just showcase and are representative of what you do. So make small um, contributions like, uh, like Livio is doing, you know, like the small books. Exactly. Combined you and Corona. You can, also, you can also make a small publication with the work that you do and it might not be um, like a, you know, like an angular ob project that you do, like a huge thing that you do, but at the same time, it's nice to experiment and you uh, also know how to do with, uh, have to deal with publications and yes. then you get a little bit of profit from it. And also um, different experiences and also how you can approach different uh, problems. Solving exactly. the book, delivering the book, how to edit the book, <laughs> how to distribute the book and how to deliver the book <laughs> and how to get the exactly. payment. So it's become like, oh, a logistic problem to solve. And that's become a very nice experience. And actually... Yeah, challenge, yeah, yeah. definitely. It helps you with the bigger projects, like the art work, uh, for example, selling when you sell it in the art fair, you know, you need to, to make a signage, you need to yeah. make a pocket certification, like, certificate, like a, so a ledge of authenticity, you know, yeah. how to deliver the work to the client, how to pack the work for the client, you know, you do you include it, Right, so you become prepared for for big questions which are coming in the bigger projects. Uh, yeah, definitely, and also you know when it comes to publications and books, if you know how to do a small scene, yes. um, and how to do it nicely, uh, then when it comes to you know crowdfunding and having and uh, running a crowdfunding campaign for your books which might, you know, require 3,000, 5,000 or more, like a bigger sum, you, you know what the ropes are, you're prepared for that. And, and you can actually deliver on points. So it doesn't always have to start with big, like uh, as it with financial independence. As I call uh, it, yeah. the principle, you know, like a Russian exactly. girl, I love this yeah. principle of selling. You start from something small and you solve the problems. And when you solve the problem of this, sphere you start to grow the next one more complex and uh, bringing new problems and you grow it like a, like a, like a spheres and when something goes wrong you don't explode like a bubble you just yeah, that's true. level down to kind of to something more solid it's like if you want to see it's like a matryoshka like a russian doll and that's that's kind of that's what i always when i make a project and approach and i always have this in mind that i don't want to go from zero to to something extremely big which doesn't fit the screen mm -hmm. but like, you know like something small and to know that i can do it and i can deliver and it has a it has a quality exactly know, i can deliver at this level and then i want higher quality then I'm, i go to something bigger so i need to bring new resources new people mm -hmm. new material new knowledge new distribution yeah. uh, everything new. <laughs> that's and true that's that's also how we go with the gallery, you know, how we started, you know, yeah. being uh, in, in this living room that I'm sitting in, and now we have our independent place and looking for the third location already. So, oh my God, it's the third, that's true. Yeah, and started here, my God, five years ago or six years ago. So really, really interesting. And now yeah, that's true, because it's third. Wow, 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 time flies. Time and, flies. you know... And and before before you you know it you're you're forty and you're you're middle middle established middle established artist so it's um, career artist to meet career gallery yeah that's how it is yeah and especially but that's a sad subject so that's we can speak about uh, gallery <laughs> gallery call the next time <laughs> which the problems it comes with yeah yeah I hope I hope we we answered Pablo's question about showcasing the. Um, we didn't go that much into that, but made public art art projects on this moment. Well, this moment, like really with the COVID, that's a yeah. little bit difficult. Yeah. Um, 
but it's still kind of yeah at least you 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 try and put yourself out there and when uh, better times come around then you 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 really try and and show yourself so yeah i think i think that it's important in the sense that you have to be present physically with you and your art projects um in 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 like physical space so not not only leave it in your studio or your house or whatever yes and that's also courage that's also as you said at the beginning you should be like stubborn courageous and consistent and also successful and lucky <laughs> it, uh, but everything comes it's it's mission possible everything is possible that's what i see and, uh, yeah definitely and whatever keeps you afloat you know and uh, keeps you doing it and driving so yeah definitely Wonderful. So I think wow. uh, we can uh, just start to feel that my voice is also disappearing. So we are coming to, I guess, our limit of half an hour <laughs> uh, limit. Uh, but I, but what we I, need was, to yeah. I was also thinking that maybe we can also have, um, maybe in the coming weeks, like a talk with, uh, with the artists instead of just in between us. So if you want to have a little bit... Yeah, we love you too, baby. Uh, if you have, if you want to have a little bit insight directly from them on how they work, um, yeah. maybe you know, with Natalia, I don't know. I think Alicia is still is still available, or leave you, for example, uh, Jake for sure. I think he will be up for it. Um, so you have different, uh, like different media, different practices. So you know, photography, sculpture, uh, embroidery, and different themes. Uh, definitely, we can. Uh, Yeah, we can yeah. arrange it and it's a little bit more and of course they can talk about it a lot better than us so i, I because yeah we always mediate it but sometimes it's not you know to it's see not that perspective, exactly so. artistic perspective yes I exactly. think. and what we i also wanted to remind about the rock contest martina has invented very complicated subjects and there are like less than 10 days to submit yeah Uh, so we have already we started to receive the submission for the artworks and there's like four lines from the Mr. Frost uh, poem yes? Mm -hmm. Robert yeah Robert Frost, yeah, Robert Frost. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah so uh, check actually our uh, Instagram and uh, website is much, it's mentioned quite a lot about this yeah. how to submit and what we asking you to submit mm -hmm. Uh, so please do it. Uh, you can submit only one picture or series of that's pictures. Right. So there is a difference of the cost of submission and that's all. And for the series of work, it's like 40 euros and for one picture, 15 euros. So guys, it's... And then the winner goes to, Rock and uh, to Rotterdam Photo Festival. And we are going to create it together with Martina and uh, we're going to give you a kickstart to be noticed, uh, so that's also actually a possibility for you to be noted in the festivals. Mm -hmm. in so please do it, guys. Uh, submit your works. Make yourself a challenge. Yeah? Make yourself a challenge, yeah. I, I, I already was thinking about it the past few days. I was like, okay, maybe next subject, you know, it's summer. It's, it's a lot of for everyone, so we're going to do it a little bit chill a little bit more chill a little bit more uh, a little bit easier um also to approach let's see I, i still have to think about it really but i, I was thinking okay let's take it down a notch maybe yeah, just a little bit <laughs> i guess you yeah. to think <laughs> like how to do it fast yes yeah because we started like very like with you know full force so uh, maybe um yeah for the for the next for the next period we can uh We can just relax a little bit. I for sure we we need it. That's that's it's very true. So we'll see we'll see what we get this this time around. Yes. So Martin, I thank you for your time. Thank and you. for this great show about financial independence of the artist. It's a yeah. Big... It is. So yeah. And uh, and we'll see. Well let, maybe we'll really talk with the artists themselves and see what they what they You know how they got there, uh, how they came to 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 be with us, and and to see what what our plans together what to go further. How they are stubborn. Yeah. Yes, we are for sure. <laughs> <laughs>
We are for sure. Some. Yes, some. And there should be two of us. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember my, my grandmother and my mother telling me since I was, I don't know, two, three years old. Oh my God, you're so stubborn. Like you're here. Yes, because I want this and I want that and I want it now. <laughs> yes. So that's how it goes. It comes together. Exactly. Well, yeah, thank you so much. Much. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys for watching us. And we stay in touch. And if you have questions, write to us. We will be glad to catch up and next week to answer it. So next week, number 15. Ciao, ciao. That's true. <laughs> Bye, guys. Time flies. Bye-bye, guys. So see you next week. Ciao.